Hello, good afternoon everyone. So welcome back to Liquid Brain. So today is the part 4 of a 10 part video series on a Google Sheet tutorial. So specifically today we are talking about unique, count if and count if as. So how do you combine all this together to make a very simple meta exploratory exercise on the Iris data set. Okay, so now if you don't already know, import data is where you try to import a standard CSV data from one of the URL. So this is what we call iris data, which is actually um, the characteristic of three different species of flower. So it's very commonly used in almost all the online exercise on data analytics and, and, and stuff basically. So the first two lines is the sample length and the sample length and sample width. The third and fourth column is the parallel length and the width and the last one is the species. So specifically, there's three species, the Cetosop, the Versicola, and the Virginica. So all three of them has a very slightly different characteristic of the flower, and which is why we can usually tell three of them apart based on the four data set over here. So I also use the same data for like machine learning, SVM, neural network, and random forest, which of course you can find a link in the description below. So if you're interested in coding in R, and it's some very basic machine learning exercise. Okay, so let's go back to Google Sheets. So the first one is the unique. I think from the name uh, suggests it just displays the number of unique elements within the system. Uh, remember that on uh, the, what is that called? Uh, Google Sheet is not case sensitive. Is it case or not case, case sensitive? Uh, it's not case sensitive, I suppose. So in this case, if it's, if it's a different capital, so if I change the first Sendosa to the capital S, Oops, doesn't work like that. So, but if I do change any of the data here, let me just actually do that so that I can change the data set a little bit. Okay, so, so to use unique, you just pipe in unique and you just put in the range, that's it. So it can be a single column, it can be four or five columns, and so on and so forth, doesn't matter. But it will only display the number of unique elements. So of course, you are using a list like me, you display only the unique elements one after another, but if you are putting in array, they'll give you the unique row data. Okay, that's a slightly different thing. So in this case, uh, if you have a data set that is slightly different in terms of the capital, the spelling, or you know, the second one has a star in the end, it will actually show up as a different element. So ensure that all of your data, if it's the same species, you have exactly the same format and exactly the same uh, capital um, capitalization of the characters. So that it will ensure that the unique will be able to fish them out individually rather than you know misclassifying them and unique element even though they're not okay unique simple enough so second one is count if so count if i will count the number of elements fulfilling a certain criteria so in this case how to use it is that you use the range to fit it in and the second one is the criterion so criterion can be a single string which is like a text matching which is what i've done here so is E12 to E. So when you, in Google Sheet, if you don't put the, the last letter, it will actually be the maximum range within a certain sheet. So in this case, you can actually scroll down the sheet, you should have a thousand uh, rows. In this case, E2 to E means E2 to E1000. And if you add more rows down, it will automatically update it. So you go until the maximum number of rows within the data sheet. Okay, so I11, actually this one, so source is Setosa. So which is why it will give me a count of 50, because there's 50 Setosa flower within this data set. So if I go to Versicola, it should also give me 50. And Virginica, I think it's also 50 as well. Yeah, they're all 50. So this is very how you can very easily count the column. So if I want to count pattern width rather than the species, I can change this to D, and then I can put this as... Uh, how many point two is the, the paddle width? So paddle width, you have twenty eight of them. So here, if you if you filter out all this and you read by row and count one by one, you realize that there's zero point two of them. There is two point eight. Then it, how about we put zero point one? There's six of them. Zero point three. There's seven of them. So and so forth. So that's how you can do a count if to understand how many of them is a certain element within the data sheets. Okay. So count if and count if you put an S behind. As the name suggests, we will just count more than a single criteria. Okay, just now uh, when we do count over here, we realize that we only put in a single array and a single criteria. So a single criteria. Okay, but for count if as, so you can actually do source one and source two. So if you look at the code over here, the first 
set represent the first count. So criteria range one and the criteria one. So what I do is that uh, I 19 over here. So E, I'll count based on Sentosa. The second run is actually D where it counts on the source. So instead of doing just a simple text matching, as the example suggests over here, you can see, it can also be a range, a, a comparison. So in this case, I want to count Sentosa, which is the species is Sentosa, and I want the panel length to be lower than 0 0.5. The number I have is 40. So if I put 0 0.4, I'll have 41. If I put 0 0.3, I'll have 20, 34, and so on. So this is the number of the count which fulfill both of the criteria. However, it is it is coded so that you will use it on the same table with, with the same data set. So if you are counting, you're using a count if s on two completely different tables, I'm not too sure what will happen. I have to look at your two tables to understand, but try to use it on a single table so that you get more predictable and understandable output. Okay, so now comes the very interesting part, which is unique plus count if. So in this case, it's actually just putting uh, unique and count if together, so not in the same cell, but rather as kind of a, a summarization table in this case. So, so first one is that I run a unit to get a total number of species, and the second one I do a count on how many um, sample are each of them. So I know that's 50 Setosa, 50 Verscola, and 50 Virginica very easily, because if you look at the raw data here, it's very hard to know how many data come from uh, which source and so on and how many of uh, this in, is in a certain range and so on. So this is also very useful if you want to plot a histogram with certain customization of the um, bin width or the bin value. Okay, so in this case, I want to know how many of them are in uh, Setosa with a sample length of less than 5.5. So in this case, you can see Setosa has 50 sample size and the sample length that has less than 5.5 is 45. And Versicola, slightly bigger flower. So the sample length, only six of them is less than 5.5. Well, Virginica has the biggest flower because there's only one sample that less than 5.5. So if you don't want to put 5.5, you can put uh, 4.9 and you get a different value and so on and so forth. So, so this is a very useful table for you to summarize the data as well as set custom uh, cutoff points so you can actually easily understand the data, how it works and what's the overall. So, just for a recap, so today we're talking about unique count if and count if x. So unique, uh, you fit in an, an array, a list, you give you the unique number of rows or unique number of elements that you have. So in this case, I have 150 samples of three flowers. It summarizes it into three species directly. Okay, so count if counts the number of elements that fulfill a certain criteria. So si similarly, you also fit in a list and you, you just put in the criteria. So in this case, uh, which one of them is equals to 0 0.3 and instead of just doing exact number match you can also say smaller or you can also say uh, bigger so that is how you can actually also kind of easily understand the data in a certain way so count if uh, a step up from count if where count if only count or only do a certain uh, one single criterion count if s can go much higher so in this case two three or four different array for the comparison However, it is designed to be used on the same table so that you just you can just put in different criteria from a different column of the same table. So don't use the different data set. So, um, and then you can actually combine unique and count if to kind of understand that you know, each species, which, how many of them actually fulfill a certain criteria and how many sample size that you have. So this is how you can easily get kind of a pivot table like and a little bit more customization in your pivot table or summary table of your data set. So this is uh, part four of the Google Sheet series. Um, if you want to have an uh, understanding of other topics in Google Sheets, you can actually look at the topic here down below and you can find a link to all the video and a playlist in the video description down below. So thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video. Bye.